for now, I am dealing with two possibilities, A or B, not A, B, or C. All right, so what will be the outcome? The same thing. And so I have my third draw or third trial. Now, let's read something here, and please watch this. Often, students are confused about this, but I'll help you with it. Now, watch this. I'm going to begin from the very first draw, and I'll trace to the last draw. So, I have A in the first draw, A in the second draw. So, watch this. A, A, A. So, my outcome at the end of three draws, one possible outcome will be A, A, A. So, following from that branch, that's why it's called the tree diagram, I have A, A, A. If I move from that first branch and I move downwards instead of the upper branch, I'll have A, B, and back to A. So, I could have another option, A, A, and B. Remember, I have picked A already, so I come here. So, I have A, A, B. And I could have A, B, B, something. Watch it. So I have A, B, A. So A, 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 B, A, B, A. Then I could have A, B, B. How am I following it? Please watch it from A, A, A. So I pick the first one of the first draw the first of the second draw, and the first of the third draw, A, A, A. The first of the first draw, the second of the second draw, and the second or the, of the second draw. So I have A, A, B. Are you following that? So A, 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 B, A, B, A, A, B, B. And I could go on and on. Now, I'm, I've exhausted A, so I come to B. So I have B, A, A. Then I have B, A, B. Please, are you following? Then I have B, B, A. And finally, I have B, B, B. So those are my possible outcomes. And I have eight of them. These are the outcomes you will be working with if you are going to use a tree diagram. Now, when you're using a tree diagram, please be careful. First of all, note the question, is it with replacement or without replacement? If it is without repla with replacement, then your answers will practically be the same throughout. However, if we have a situation without replacement, now watch what is going to happen here. And I need you to be very, very observant here. In the first instance, we have AB. If the probability of A occurring is 4 on 7, and the probability of B occurring is 3 on 7, you notice 4 on 7 plus 3 on 7, we have 7 on 7, which is one whole number. It must always amount to one whole number. If any other thing, then you're wrong. It's a quick check. So we have our first draw or first trial. Again, we now spread out our three branches. So we have these instances. Now, remember, we are not replacing in this circumstance. So if we picked A the first time and it was 4 on 7, and we did not return it, two things happen. Please, I need you to observe this very well. Two things happen. Number one, the number of A's will reduce. It was originally 4. So let's say there were 4 ripe oranges, and there were 3 unripe oranges in the bag. If we pick one ripe orange, or the probability of picking a ripe orange becomes 4 over 7. But one of the ripe oranges are out. So the number of ripe oranges reduces by 1 in the bag. They are no longer 4. They are now 3. Because we do not return it. It is without replacement. Something else happens. The total number of oranges in the bag also reduces by 1. Because 1 has been taken out. So instead of 7 oranges in the bag, 4 ripe, 3 unripe, now we have three ripe, and six oranges in all. So the probability of picking another ripe orange will be three on six. Did you get that? Let me take you a step backwards. The probability of picking a ripe orange, so there are four ripe oranges, 
And there are three unripe oranges. So there are seven oranges. All of them the same color. I mean the same size. If, and we pick one. If we got the probability of picking a ripe orange as four on seven, two things happen. The number of ripe oranges reduces by one. So they are no longer four, they now become three. Something else happens. The total number of oranges in the bag also reduces by one. So there are no longer seven oranges, there are six. Because we did not replace without replacement. So it is somewhere outside. So the probability of picking a ripe orange will now be three divided by the total number six. What would be the probability of picking an unripe orange after we have picked a ripe one? Well, the unripe oranges, the number has not changed because we did not pick an unripe orange the first time. What we picked was a ripe orange. So the number of unripe oranges is still three, and the total number of oranges, because we've taken one ripe one out, we have six oranges in the bag. So the probability of picking an unripe orange will now be three on six as well. Did you notice that three on six plus three on six gives us six on six, which again gives us one whole number. It must always be one whole number. All right. The probability of picking, let's say we have picked an unripe orange. So we move from that first arm of the tree. We go to the B side. Say we picked an unripe orange, and probability of doing that was three on seven. We did not return it. We did not replace it. We took it out of the bag or the box, whatever, whatever container it was in. Now, two things again happen. Number one, the number of unripe oranges reduces by one. They are no longer three. They become two. And the number of oranges in all become six. Please note that these are possibilities. So this part I am on shows that I, the first has not happened. In other words, I have not picked any other orange. This is the first orange I'm picking. It is unripe, three on seven. If I pick a second one and it is ripe, the number of ripe oranges will be the same. It will still be four. But the number of oranges has changed in the bag from seven to six. So I have four on six. And without really doing too much calculation, if you simply say one minus four on six, you should get two on six. But if you wanted the logic, it is the fact that if I have taken one unripe orange, and the total number of oranges is now six. If I must pick another unripe orange, the total number of unripe oranges reduces by one from three to two, and the total number of oranges in the bag has become six. So two on six. Again, four on six plus two on six gives you one whole number. That brings us to our second draw. We have drawn the second one. Of course, our third draw will be a little more complicated, but not too complicated. Again, if we've picked an, a ripe orange, four over seven, the first time we did not replace, we picked again three on six. Definitely, if we pick a third one and it's expected to be a ripe orange, the number has reduced from four to three, now to one, to two, sorry. So we have two on five. Why five? Because again, the total number of oranges in the bag, having picked two out, two from five, from seven, I beg your pardon, is five. So I have two on five, and we go on and on. So we have three on five if we now picked an unripe orange. And three on five, two on five, three on five, two on five. The final one, let's do the very last one. If we picked an unripe orange, three on seven, and we picked another unripe one, the number reduces to two on six, because total number reduces. If we were to pick a ripe orange, well, we have not picked any orange. If we wanted to pick three oranges, we have picked the first unripe, the second unripe, so BB, but the third one, A, is ripe. We have not picked any ripe, so the number of ripe oranges are still the same, four. Four. But the total number of oranges in the bag has reduced by two, so two from seven, we have five. So four on five is the probability of picking one ripe orange, having picked two unripe oranges earlier without replacement. And if we must pick finally another unripe orange, then the number has reduced from three to two and to one. This is our third draw, and those are the outcomes. So please, again, this is one technique 
of solving. And remember, it is AAA, meaning a ripe orange and another ripe orange and another ripe orange. And remember, the word and in probability means what? Multiplication. So it is like saying 4 on 7 multiplied by 3 on 6 multiplied by 2 on 5. So 4 on 7 multiplied by 3 on 6 multiplied by 2 on 5. And you could do your quick calculations here. And for this particular instance, your answer will be 4 on 35. So that will be the probability of picking three ripe oranges without replacement. The probability of picking the first ripe orange, the second unripe, and the third ripe will be this. If A means ripe oranges, B means unripe. So the first being ripe, the second unripe, and the third as ripe without replacement will follow the chain. We'll have 4 on 7 multiplied by 3 on 6 multiplied by 3 on 5. Well, at this point, you can do some manipulation here. And um, we'll end up with 6 on 35. Did you notice that our answers are all fractions? None less than 0, none greater than 1. Let's do the last one. What will be the probability of picking 3 unripe oranges without replacement? 3 unripe. Remember, B in our instance is unripe. So it will be this situation. So we have 3 on 7 multiplied by 2 on 6 multiplied by 1 on 5. If we did the arithmetic, we end up with 1 on 35. And that's our probability there. So whenever you have a problem, one of the ways to solve it is to use the tree diagram, but always be careful to note in the problem statement whether it is with replacement or without replacement. All right. There's another technique. It is called the factorial. The factorial. What is the factorial? It is simply multiplying a positive integer all the way down to 1 or 1 to that. So, for example, if I said 5 factorial, I simply mean 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. We never multiply less than 1. So 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. So it, you could say it in another way. The 5 factorial, that exclamation mark means factorial. 5 factorial could simply be put, simply put as 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. You could say 4 factorial is given by 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which will give you 24, by the way, and on and on. In general... We say that n factorial, where n is any number, is n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by n minus 2, multiplied by n minus 3, all the way until we get to 1. Because we don't know what n is, we put the ellipsis in between the multiplication sign, because there could be many minuses. For example, 15 factorial will be 15 minus 1, 15 multiplied by 15 minus 1, multiplied by 15 minus 2, and there will be a long list. We will not do that. But in general, by convention, we say that 1 factorial must be equal to 0 factorial, and both of them have a value 1. Some time ago, a friend of mine from Prempe College, Noble, asked the question, why is it so? Because I can understand 1 factorial as 1, but why should 0 factorial be 1 as well? That's a bit confusing, I understand. It brings me to the next concept. It's called combination. What is combination? In mathematics, if you choose from a group or a set of objects, and you are uninterested in the order in which you chose, we call that a combination. If, however, you choose and the order is important to you, it is not a combination. We call that a permutation. We will not have the space and time to deal with permutation today. But because most probabilities 
have to do, or some probabilities at this level, have to do with picking without the order in mind, we can use combination, another technique of solving it. So when we pick, for example, in a sports meet, positions are important. Who came first, who came second, who came third is important. So order is important. In class, who came top, who so was second, and all of that is important. But there are times when it's not important. Your password, which digit comes before what, is important because the, it's important the order. So if you have a four-digit password, one, two, three, four, it is not the same thing as 2134 or 4321. They are entirely different. So it is very important in mathematics that we consider order. Order is important to us in mathematics. But for purposes of probability, we'll be using combinations where order is not important. The way you put the values are immaterial. So how do we do it? We write it as C n of r or n r in the vector-like form, or n combination r, which is one of the most popular ways of representing it. What does that mean? The n there means the total sample space you're dealing with. And r is either your success or failure, depending on what you're looking for. What does n combination r? We call it n combination r, the C for combination. N combination R. What does this stand for? It means we are choosing R objects from N possible objects. And remember, in probabilities, we are simply saying this favorable outcomes as a ratio of all possible outcomes. So you see how they just meet somewhere there. Well, that is why the topic probabilities always comes together with statistics in your final exams for elective math students. So generally, we say that n combination r is equal to, and please note that, n factorial all divided by n minus r factorial r factorial. For example, if we had 5 combination 2, it would be 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 2 factorial 2 factorial which would eventually give us 5 factorial all over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. And that is one critical way of solving problems. I will take you through a problem or two. As soon as the question gets on the screen, I want you to just hit it up. Try it, and let's see what you have. So let's try some applications of all we have learned. Look at this problem. A bag contains 40 identical marbles. Note the word identical. It's like saying unbiased fair. They are identical. 10 of which are green and the rest are red. Find the probability of picking at random, notice our words, a red marble from the bag. Our phone lines are open. For those of you core math students, I believe you can try this. So the question is, find the probability of picking at random a red marble from the bag. If you give it a try, it will be great. Come on, give it a try. What is the probability? Find the probability of picking at random, your eyes closed in the dark, that's random, a red marble. They are all identical. There are 40 of them. 10 of them are green. What is the probability? What is the possibility that if you picked, you will pick a red marble? What's the probability? You want to give it a try. All right. I'll pause on my solution for a second and see if somebody is going to give it a try. Keywords, identical marbles. That's just to show you it's fair. You cannot, by feeling it, tell what is in there. You can't tell which of them is red by feeling because colors are not generally, I don't know if there's any superpowers that can make you determine colors by feeling. All right, Daniel, good evening. You're welcome to the revision show. Thank you. Daniel, where are you calling us from? 
I'm calling from Offense with Commercial Offense. Fantastic. Daniel, what school do you attend? Utibu attends senior high school. Both. Great, Utibu. great, great. So, Daniel, tell me, what, what do you think is the probability of picking a red marble from the bag? Three over four. How did you get that? Uh, the question gave us the total number of marbles to be 40. Okay. And the number of... I want the question. Okay, so the question will be shown on the screen. And let me read it out to you. 40 identical marbles. 10 are green, the rest are red. So what's the probability of picking a red? Okay. So the total number of balls, the balls in the bag is 40. Okay, this time they are not balls. I know you are used to balls, but this time around okay. they are marbles. And 10 of them are green. Great. So in order to find the re uh, red, you have to subtract the 10 from 40. You are, you are so right. So the key yes. word there is the rest. Okay, so the rest is red, but you don't know the number of uh, red marbles in the red uh, balls in the marbles. Okay, you mean the number of red marbles in the bag? Yes. Okay. So for you to get that, you have to subtract it from the 40 because the number of green marbles was given. Okay. And total was also given, so you have to subtract from the 40 to get 30. Great. So you have to know the number of red balls in the marbles to be 30. All right. So to find the probability of red marble from the back, it should be 30 over the total, which is 40. And so by doing the calculation, it's 3 over 4. Michael, right? Is the name Michael? Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Yeah, God is judge. Daniel, I agree with you. Perfectly. But Daniel, are you still on the line? Yes, please. So Daniel, well, you are calling, so I expect that you have skipped some things. For okay. exam purposes, especially so, or even if you're writing to a friend, it is always a great idea to declare your variables. It's one of the major rules in algebra. Okay. Let the green be represented by a specific alpha, and you must write it. So okay. thank you very much. I agree with your answer, three on four. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you. Too. All right. So Daniel gets our first question. So I am only adding, especially for exam purposes, please declare your variables. So let uh, G stand for green, R stand for red. Usually in the exams, the colors or whatever distinguishing factor is giving names that are easy to denote. So they will tell you a white ball, a green marble, something, so that they are unique. You can easily represent them with alphabet. So G and R in this case will fit. So if that is true, and it is, I have used the Greek alphabet Psi as my universal set, 40, and the number of green balls is 10. And there are only two types of balls, green, sorry, marbles, green and red. So green marbles, plus red marbles, total number of marbles. If I have the total as 40, then the number of red marbles must be 40 minus 10, like Daniel says, and I agree with him, we have 30. So we have our probability here as the number of red, probability of picking a red marble is equal to the, the favorable condition, which is the number of red mar marbles, 30, divided by the total outcome, 40. So we have 30 on 40, reduced to 3 over 4. By the way, you could leave your probabilities as decimals. So 3 over 4 is 0 0.75. You do not always have to leave them in decimals, but you could. By the way, the question is given to you as decimals. Usually the requirement is that your answer should be decimals. If the question was given to you in fractions, then your answers should be in fractions. All right. Let's... Try another way of solving the same problem. This time around, I want you to watch this. We have found out a few things. Total number of marbles, 40. Number of red marbles, 30. Number of green marbles, 10. Let's use the combination to solve it. We'll have this procedure. Look at what you have on your screen. We will say that since there are 30 green, sorry, 30 red marbles, and the probability of picking a red marble, we're picking only one marble. And that marble has to be green. Sorry, it has to be red. So 30 combination one. 30, the possible number of red marbles. But we want one out of it. Do you remember N combination R? 
Do you remember that? Okay. So n in this case is uh, 30. But we're picking one red ball. That was the requirement of the question. So I have that one down there. And multiplication. Now, I'm only picking one marble, not two. So if I pick one red, I don't want to pick a green. So zero green. But how many greens are there? There are 10. So 10 combination zero. All of that divided by total number of marbles in the bag, 40. And of that 40, I only needed one. So the one over there. So did you notice that? 30 red marbles, I'm picking only one of it. So 30 combination one multiplied by 10 green marbles, but I'm not picking any. I don't want any, so zero. So 10 combination zero. All of that divided by the total number of marbles in the bag, 40. And how many of them do I want? One. Remember, combination is picking without order in mind. What do I have? 30, divided, 30 factorial divided by 30 minus one, factorial, one factorial. Remember we said n combination r is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, r factorial. So I have applied that in the second line of my solution. Multiply, why am I multiplying? And no green ball. So 10 factorial divided by 10 minus zero factorial zero factorial. The next step, I resolve the parentheses. 30 minus 129, 10 minus 0, 10. And in the denominator of the second line, I had 40 minus 1, which gives me 39. Now, here your calculator comes in handy if you have 1. What do you do? You go to, you press 30, shift the combination sign somewhere in your calculator. Take a moment to look at it. It's on the upper rows if you're using some of our very popular calculators. The lower rows have your numbers, not that part, the top part. I believe the second or third row, depending on the calculator you're, looking, you're working with, and it will give you the shift function that gives you combination. If you press shift and the combination sign, a C should appear on your screen. So you have 30 C, and then you can now press bracket, open a bracket, and you can just do 30C1 without even the bracket. So 30C1, I mean this step. So 30C1 times 10C0 equal to, you get a certain answer, divided by 40 shifts, combination sign, one. Your final answer from your calculator will be 0 0.75. However, if you do not have a calculator with you, there is a quick way of doing with, dealing with it. Look at this step. I'll deal with the numerator first. I will have 30 multiplied by 29. The dot there means multiplication factorial divided by 29 factorial multiplied by 1, because 1 factorial is 1. By the way, why did I simply write 30.29? It's because I noticed in the denominator, the first denominator, I have 29. So I don't need to write 29 and 28 and 27, because they will all cancel out. So I can leave it this way, multiplied by 10 factorial, and this time around, I won't even write because I notice there's another 10 factorial multiplied by 1. Why 1? Because 0 factorial, remember, is 1. All of that divided by 40 multiplied by 39 factorial. Again, because I can see 39 down here, I don't want to go further. Divided by 39 factorial multiplied by 1. Now, at this point, all I need to do is 
take out this and that. Take out the 39s. I'll end up with 30 multiplied by 1, which gives me 30. And I have 40 divided by 1, which gives me 40. So I have 30 on 40. If I divide, I end up with 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75. So that is how to solve this without a calculator. A calculator is helpful, but you can do without it. So that's our first problem. We solved it in two ways. One way was to simply check what, how many instances of red marbles do we have? And then we check the second situation, and we said, well, that divided by the total. And the second technique is to use combinations. We could have used the tree diagram. Maybe we'll try it in our next problem. Look at this. A fair coin, another problem. And here, I'd love to hear you also. A fair coin is tossed four times. What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? A fair coin is tossed four times. What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? A fair coin is tossed four times. What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? I'll pause on my solution while you give it a try. A fair coin. Notice we have qualified it. It's fair. In other words, this estimator is impartial and can give us all the possible outcomes, a head or a tail. But that fair coin was tossed four times. What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? All right, while you give it a try, let me give you John Terry. Wisdom. Wisdom. Terry. Wisdom Terry. Yes. Wisdom, you're welcome to the revision show. Thank you. Please, why are you calling us from Wisdom? Abo. Say again. Abo. Abo. Oh, great. Yes. What is the name of your high school if you are in school? Abo Senior High. Fantastic. So, Terry, tell me, what do you think of this question? The question says, a fair coin in stores Four times. Yes. What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? Yes. The possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, this is a fair coin, yes. not a die. And uh, sorry. Yes. The the possible outcome is head or tail. Okay, that is for one toss. Yes, one coin. No, no, it is one coin tossed four times. Four times? Yes. So, the first time, head or tail. Okay. Second, uh, tail or head. Okay. Third, head or tail. Okay, so let me ask you, Wisdom, how many yes. possible outcomes do you expect? Four possible outcomes. Um, think about it again, Terry. Oh, uh, eight possible outcomes. Really? Yes. Um, okay. If you toss a coin once, how many outcomes? A coin. Yes, One. once. Two possible outcomes. If you toss it twice, how many possible outcomes? Four. If you toss it three times, how many possible outcomes? Six. No. Okay, so this is a clue. The toss, since there are two possible outcomes for each toss, yes. the first toss is 2 to the power 1. The second toss, 2 to the power 2. The third toss, 2 to the power 3. And that will give you what? Power 3. Yes. 2 to the power 3. What does that give you? 2 by 2 by 2. Terry? 2 by 2 by 2. What does that give you? Hello? By two. By two. By two. Yeah. 
Eight. Good. So that is a trick. So if a coin is tossed five times, five possible times. outcomes will be two to the power of five. Are you getting yes. the trick now? It's ten. No, not ten. It's not two times five. Two to the power of five is not two times five. It means okay. two times two times two times two times two. Uh, Good. I like that. Uh -huh. I like that. Wisdom, you got the trick now, right? Yes. So if a coin is tossed four times, how many possible outcomes? Sixteen. Fantastic. So now, Terry, these are possible outcomes. You have it on your screen. Yes. So now, what have I done on the screen? And I need you to observe this because if you get this, you kill this topic. When okay. you toss a coin twice, yes. it is like tossing two coins once. Yes. So if you toss one coin four times, it is like tossing four coins once or tossing two coins twice. You get the trick? Yes. Good. So on my um, row here, I have assumed the coin has been tossed twice. On the column down here, another twice. So I have four instances, right? Yes. The first time I could have head, head. Yes. Head, tail. Yes. Tail, head. Yes. Tail, tail. Yes. Those are the possible outcomes. It is repeated yes. in the vertical down there. Yes. So if I have head, head, combining with head, head, I have head, 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 head. Do you see that? Yes. Then I have head, head, combining with head, tail. I'll have yes. head, 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 tail. Did you also get that? Yes. Then I have head, head, combining with tail, head. I'll have head, head, tail, head. Yes. Then I have head, head, combining with tail, tail. So I have head, head, tail, yes. tail. Tail, tail. Now, you do that combination, and eventually, you have 16 outcomes. Those are yes. the outcomes with the red border around them. Yes. Now, if you look at this very well, what is the question asking us for? The question is asking for... What is the probability of obtaining at least one head? Keyword, at least. What does at least mean, wisdom? It means at least. Yes. So say it in another way. How, how would you manage to get one head? No. At least we mean one or more. Wisdom, do you get that? Yes. So at least, the word, the, that phrase at least means the minimum, one. So it could be one head. How many possible outcomes? There are four, right? Yes. I mean, for each um, case, four. So either one head, two heads, three heads, or four heads. So the only situation that would not be applicable is when you have all tails. Okay. So you notice that in each case, for example, in the second row, second column, you have yes. head, head, head. So there are four situations. Yes. So there's four heads there. If you come to the um, fourth row, fourth column, this, you have two heads, two tails. Do you see that? Hello? All right. I seem to have lost wisdom. But the point is made that what we are looking for is the probability of picking at least one head. So one head or more. One head or more. So if there are 16 possibilities, as we can see on the screen, and 15 of them have one head or more, what would be the probability of picking, of having at least one head? Well, this is our solution. From the table... And that is what you would write because you have to draw a table. If you don't draw a table, you have to list them out individually in a set with curly brackets. Now, that could be very outdoors and you have the likelihood of getting wrong. Wisdom, are you back? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, Wisdom, did you get the point? Yes. All right, so what do you want to add? Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing elective math. No problem. No problem. It is still part of core math. Okay. Yes. But you're following it, right? Yes. What class are you, by the way? What form? Form 1. 
fantastic fantastic you are learning this quite early and that is brilliant and you just follow okay you will get it is okay. that okay okay so in how many situations do we have at least one head wisdom how many situations at least one head yes how many situations looking, looking at the table yes at the last table we have tip two yes that is this right yes yeah so doing that to get at least one one head yes how many how many situations will have one head or more that is at least one head at least one head yes you divide head no okay so wisdom follow me now watch this we have 16 possible outcomes right yes sir so if you count it's four by four 16. yes and there are 15 of them that have one head or more yes there's only one situation where there is no head because in that last case where I circled, it is still, till, till. So four of them. So there is no head. So the probability of picking a head is the number of heads greater than or equal to one divided by the total outcome, 15 on 16. And that's our answer in brief. All right, there is another way of solving it. Instead of counting how many situations have at least a head, Maybe we'll look for the situation where there is no head. And remember, the probability that a thing will occur plus the probability that it will not occur must be one. So the probability of at least a head and no head, if we add it together, it must be one. So, Estiamo Francis. Good evening. Good evening, Francis. Good evening, sir. Good madam. Good evening, Francis. Good evening, sir. All right. Evening, so, Francis, where are you calling us from? I'm calling this from PRC, Ashanti hey. region. All right. So, are you in a high school? Hello, yes. Francis. Hello, Francis. Hello. Are you a student of a high school? Hello. Hello, Francis. I can hear you. Oh, I lost Francis. He could not hear me, although he was very loud and clear in my ears. All right. So there is another way of dealing with this same problem, which is even faster. What is that way? Instead of counting all the situation where there is at least a head, just look for the situation where there was no head and take it from one. So an alternative solution, look at the table. There's 16 outcomes, one situation where there is no head. So probability of one head will be one minus probability of no head. So no head. Do I have Michael on the line? Good evening, Michael. Oh, the lines are not helping today. Michael's line has dropped. The probability of no head, what would that be? I suspect Michael wanted to talk about that. Well, because we do not have time on our hands, there is only one situation of no head. So 1 on 16 is the probability of no head. So the probability of at least a head would be 1 minus the probability of no head, which is 1 minus 1 on 16, which gives us 15 on 16. Just a logical way of dealing with it. All right. Maybe another question. So that. Frame Pong, good evening. Evening. Frame Pong, did I take the wind out of your soul? Did I answer the question before you called? Yes. Okay, so Frame Pong, where are you calling us from, by the way? Efijase. Efijase. Yes. What is the name of your high school if you are in one? Pentecost. All right. So um, tell me, Frimpon, of all we have done today, tell me something you have really come to understand. I've come to understand that when you toss a coin. Yes. You, you get head and tail. Good. And there's a probability that. Oh, again, his line dropped. Viewers, sorry, our lines aren't in the best of shape, but please keep trying. Vincent, good evening. Hello. Hello, Vincent, good evening. Good evening. Yes, Vincent, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Abilikuma. Fantastic, Vincent. 
Something you want to say? I'm very interested. Uh, please. Is it an unbiased die and a coin are tossed once? Okay. Is that what is the probability of having a score less than three in a tail? Yeah. That's the question on your screen. Yes. Okay. So, is it on an unbiased die? Yeah. And the coins are tossed once. Yeah. The, the unbiased means. The die is tossed. The probability of it coming, the probability of the die, the outcomes, yes, is going to be that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Great, Vincent, you are right on that. And the unbiased means it means it is being selected and replacement. All right. So no, it's not without replacement. Unbiased simply means that it is fair. It's Nothing has been done to it like Hiro Nakamura did in, in season one, episode four of Heroes, where he manipulates it. It's free. It decides things by itself. So that's what unbiased means. And that is why I give examples in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Hadith, in different cultures where we try to get fairness. So, for example, the prophet was said to have written the names of his wives on leaves put it in his laps or in a bowl, and a stranger is asked to pick because the stranger doesn't know whose name is where. And when he picks, he is not by, he has no interest. And whichever name was picked, the prophet took that particular wife on his journey. That was, I mean, recounted to us by Abu Bakr in the Hadith. All right, so in this situation, the, bi the die is unbiased. It means it's not weighted. It's not done in such a way that whenever you throw it, it must appear a sex or a particular number, two, three, or anything. Any number can easily and equally occur. That's what unbiased means. So, Vincent, you get the point. Hello, Vincent. I seem to have lost Vincent. But that's the idea. So, how do we solve such a problem? Our numbers, are, our lines are still open. 0302-211-698. 0302-211-699. Well, I don't want to take the wind out of your sail. So if you give it a try, it'll be great. But if you're finding it difficult, this is how to go about it. First of all, you have to draw a table. If you don't draw a table, you have to list it out with set notations, a curly bracket. Again, you have to define what your set is. So you can call it S equal to curly bracket, maybe head one, head two, head three. But a table is a very good way of dealing with it. So you draw a table this way. So on my top row, Yes. Vincent, you're back. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes. So you, you are calling from Ablekuma, right? Yes, please. What is the name of your high school, Vincent? Benkum Senior High. Oh, really? Yes, please. Also, Vincent, so now you understand what the bias and unbiased means? Yes, please. Okay. So on your screen, you have one, two, three, four, five, six on the horizontal top row. And on the vertical extreme left, you have head tails. Now, yes, do you see the outcomes in there? Yes, please. Okay. How many outcomes do we have? We have six, uh, 12 outcomes. Good. So you notice one outcome is head one, head two, all the way to head six. Yes. Then tail one to tail six. Now, based on this, let's answer the question. What is the probability of having a score less than three and a tail? Less, less than, than three, three and a tail. tail. What is the score less than three? The score less than three, that's one and two. Good. So one and two that are tails, how many of them? One and two that have tails, that's each two, uh, one and each two. No, that are tails, not heads, tails. Tail, that's each one and each two. No, tails. Tail. Yes, H is head, T, tail. So... T1 and T2, sorry. Fantastic. T1 and T2. Yes, please. So what is the probability of having a score less than 3 and a tail? What would it be? It would be, that's T1 and T2. That's one, 2 over 12. 2 over 12. And that will give that us what? 1 over 6. Fantastic. And that is your answer. You are the man, Vincent. <laughs> 1 on 6. 1 on 6. You are right there. 1 on 6. So that is how to deal with it. 
Drawing your table helps you to visualize your work and it makes the work quite easier. All right, let's do another one. A drawer contains, and this will be our last problem for the day. A drawer contains identical socks. 12 are blue and 8 are yellow. If two are picked in the dark without replacement, what is the probability that both are of the same color? Two. Both are of different colors. Jackson, good evening. Both are of different colors. Good evening, Jackson. Oh, Jackson doesn't seem to hear me. Well, let's complete the question. So we have two problems on the board, on the screen. A drawer contains identical socks. Maybe ankle leg socks, calf length socks, knee length socks. They are identical. But for their colors, 12 of them are blue. Eight of them are yellow. Good evening, Juliet. What's that? Do I have Juliet on the line? Yes, please. You're welcome, Juliet. You have my first lady on the show. Okay. Why are you calling us from Juliet? Say again. Eastern region. Kweu, great. Is it very cold in Kweu today? Please, sir. Is it cold in Kweu today? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So tell me, what question do you want to answer? Which of them, A or B? Um, A. A. Okay. So give it a shot. Let's let's hear you. Okay. A driver. Um, a drawer. A driver contains identical stuff. Yes, it's a drawer. Yeah. And. Oh no! I lost Juliet. Juliet, try again. Please try again. All right. A drawer, a chest, a drawer. Hello. Hello. Hello, Caleb. Hello. Yes, Caleb. Yes. Let me hear you, Caleb. Uh, then. Hello, Caleb. Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, say the A. Yes. Why are you calling us from Caleb? I'm calling from Abwazi. Okay, so give it a shot. What question is it you want to answer, A or B? The A. Okay, so let me hear you. Okay, so say. Yes. Uh, of the same color. Yes. We, uh, we have to take the uh, 12 blue and the 8. Yes. And we will add them. Okay. So it will be... 20. All right. But uh, we don't know the total uh, number of socks in the drawer. Um, those are the only socks in the drawer. It says they contain identical socks. 12 are blue, 8 are yellow. That's all. So how many socks do we have? Uh, okay, so we we'll, we'll get 20 over it. Caleb, you may need to raise your voice so that our other audience can hear you. So then we'll get 20 over 20. 20 over 20 will mean that we'll pick exactly the same colors all the time. And it's a probability. One will mean that it is certain. Let me help you here, Caleb. Watch this. Let's represent B and Y. The blue socks as B and Y as the yellow socks. Number of blue socks, 12. Number of yellow socks, 8. So total number of socks will be 20. Probability of picking a blue socks will be 12 on 20. Probability of picking a yellow socks will be 8 on 20. If we are going to pick um, two socks and they are going to be of the same color, it means the first is blue or the second is, and the second is blue or the first is yellow and the second is yellow. So blue, blue, yellow, yellow. That is the only condition for which we would have socks of the same color. And remember, and means multiplication, or means addition. Probability of picking the first one being blue, 12 on 20. 
The second one being blue, 11 over 19, because we are not replacing. Or plus, if the first is yellow, 8 on 20, and the second is yellow, 7 on 19. All right. If we do this manipulation, we would have 188 over 380. You can reduce it to 47 over 95. And this is how to solve it. It's just the logic. Two socks of the same color. So blue, blue, or yellow, yellow. Blue, blue, or so blue and blue, or yellow and yellow. You can try the second question, which says the probability of two different colors. So first could be blue, second is yellow, or first is yellow, second is blue. I want you to give that a shot. Remember, this time around, without replacement. And you can try the tree diagram. You can try combinations. It's been fun bringing you probabilities on your revision show. I have enjoyed it thoroughly and the pleasure of your company. We'll see you again next time as we consider yet another important topic, especially for the final year students as you approach that almighty examinations. Please keep learning, keep tuned to this channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.